Hello, I want to do a little short video about um, doing the deep inner work. We'll have heard this term um, being bandied about um, and sometimes we can get frustrated with it. I know I have got frustrated with it as I have been doing the inner work and then I have to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And I remember when I first started on, I suppose my spiritual journey and um, my soul journey um, really just looking at um, all the parts within me that I needed to integrate to be happier in life, to love myself more, to um, be motivated, to eat well, to exercise, to not get triggered by, you know, people, family, you know, the world around us, okay? And um, for me, it's been a quite a long process. I have been doing this stuff for a long, long time, okay? And um, for many of us, we just don't have the time. We're feeling anxious right now. We're feeling a bit lost, um, a bit fearful, um, a bit helpless almost. Um, um, I'm worried about the future. I'm worried, you know, about our family, our loved ones, things like that. So I thought what I would do um, was posts. One of the things that really, really helps me is reading, okay? And I would have went to, you know, different people to help me, you know, um, spiritual mentors and, you know, had different things done and done my own courses and things, which just can take quite a long time and are really, really worth it. But what, one of the things that I always had to do in the middle was to keep me in check on a daily basis was to really, really read a good book or listen to a good audio book or a good podcast, okay? And um, podcasts are brilliant and um, they are free. And um, for me, I just like listening to fun people and um, I'm gonna be setting up my own podcast soon, which will be exciting. And um, for me, I like, um, I really like Shaman Jarek's podcast, to be honest. It's called Ancient Wisdom Today, and he just cracks me up. He is hilarious and just so real, but he has lovely meditations in there as well as some teachings um, to help us get through, but also some interviews too. Um, books. For me, one of the very first books that I ever read was this book. Now, excuse the writing on it because it's like old. It's got stuff I think my children wrote all over it. It's called Embracing Uncertainty by Suzanne Jeffers. Now, I read that when I was traveling around Australia. I was very, very young. Okay, so um, what age are my children? My eldest is like 12. So yeah, so you're probably talking, I don't know, 17 years ago. I can't remember, quite a long time ago. And I remember reading this one. She also said, Susan Jeffers also has another book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And it's also really, really good from memory, okay? So achieving peace of mind as we face the unknown, embracing uncertainty. And it's a really lovely book. It's not very long, okay? And it's a lovely book. Um, as, oh golly, this book has got so, embracing the learning, all different chapters in here. Um, the tuning into the world exercise, this little mini course in into intuition, you know, so there's probably little exercises and stuff in it and how to quiet the mind and things. So that's a really, really good book. Okay, so that would have been my first, one of my first ones. So it's important to keep it simple. So for me, when I'm reading, sometimes I'll have really deep books and sometimes I'll have really, um, um, you know, um, really easy to read books. Okay, so this is one that's not spiritual, but it's also really, really powerful if you are um, an entrepreneur or if you are even working, um, you know, for somebody at the minute. Um, it's called The 4-Hour Work Week by right? um, Tim Ferriss, okay? It's really, really good. He has a good podcast also, um, like a business podcast as well, from memory. And um, this, where is this bookmark? And we'll just open it up here where the bookmark is. I don't know what this is. So the top 13 new rich mistakes that we make, okay? And the first one being losing sight of dreams and falling into work for work's sake, okay? This is super important. Um, whenever you do choose a job or you do want to set up a business or whatever it is, or you're starting to re-look at everything, many of us are doing that at the minute in lockdown, looking at, am I happy in that job? Is that fulfilling me? What else could I do? What could I retrain in doing? That's what I did. I used to work in the corporate world. I have a marketing degree um, and um, I used to sell alcoholic drinks and now I am completely have flipped it and I am a wellbeing coach. Um, but that has taken me many years to retrain, to follow my own journey. And now I'm just doing something I truly love. And to me, it just doesn't feel like work. And it's a lovely place to be, but it took me a long time to do that, okay? To get there, it doesn't have to. 
this is a really really good good book that gives you some useful tips and and the way it is a lot of us have a lot of stuff to do and um this helps you to really cut out what a lot of the the stuff that you don't need to be doing and to be more proactive in your work week or in your week and what you need to get done so it's a really really good book okay um when we're thinking about um manifesting and we're thinking about you know intentions like obviously i was talking about dreams and and intentions but but more from a business point of view and also you know um you know from more a scientific point of view um this is one of the ones this is probably one of my favorite books and a really good book to start with when you're starting to look at this type of stuff it's called ask and it is given and this is a book um, by esther and jerry hicks and it's learning to manifest manifest the law of attraction um, and this is the teachings of Abraham. What I would also have done um, uh, over the years of I would have followed people on YouTube. I still do that sometimes. Um, I love Phil Good. He's really, really good. And um, I would watch Amanda Ellis. Um, and um, Laurie Ladd is also very good. And uh, Lee Harris. He's brilliant. And um, um, this um, Esther and Jerry Hicks. Abraham, teachings of Abraham, they have lots and lots and lots of stuff in YouTube, really, really short 15 minute stuff, like real life stuff, and it is funny and it's interesting, it's all free. Um, but this is a really, really good book by them, and it's a really good first book. They also have another one on relationships, which is lovely as well, it's quite deep. Um, but this is a good one to start with. Um, as I open, I'm just opening these randomly, okay? Um, is there something I want to improve in your current life? Is your current life, if your current life is pleasing to you in every way, then you may have no reason to read further. I'd love to be there. <laughs> However, if there's something about your life that you wish to improve, perhaps something missing that you would like to include or something unwanted that you would like to release, the following processes will be immense value to you, okay? And there's a little bit down here, it's in brackets, I'll read this out. If you do not do something that causes a different vibrational offering, then nothing in your experience can change, okay? So this is where we can feel quite stuck and quite in our lives and quite stuck with what's going on on the outside world and feel like, oh, you know, I can't, we get quite frustrated, okay? And reading books like that with little exercises just get you thinking differently. Just even the act of watching this video the act of actually going, I'm going to go and buy one of those books, purchasing the book. You're calling that energy and you're already shifting your vibration, okay, towards more, towards what abundance, towards what that is that you're wishing to manifest, even if you don't know what that is, okay? And then when you actually open the book and start reading, you're moving yourself towards that higher vibration all of the time and then starting to do the exercises or whatever in it, okay? If you're anything like me, I keep buying books and then don't read them, so don't do that. <laughs> so what else have we got here? Um, this is a lovely book just on a, um, it's called, um, it's by Robin Sharma and he is brilliant as well. And he, he's a very good, he is another guy actually who gives really good business tips, but from a spiritual place. Um, so it's called The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. And it's a beautiful, beautiful story. So it's sort of like, um, it teaches you lessons, but it's like a really good story and a good book. And it's it's really lovely. And it's about how he, and it's true. And it's how he literally um, sold everything. He, you know, um, was a very successful businessman, sold everything to become a monk too. And it's a really fun, uplifting story. That's a good one. It's lighter. It's more like a novel. It's a nice one to start with. And that's also similar to this one here, actually, which is the 10th Insight, which I only really came across recently um, in a book club that was recommended. And um, this is a lot. It's really tiny. Look, the 10th Insight by James Redfield. I will put all of these books in um, the post as well. Holding the Vision, Further, Invention, so Further Adventures of the Celestine Prophecy. So the Celestine Prophecy would be the first book. <laughs> I just grabbed this actually. I'm just realizing this is the second book. So the Celestine Prophecy would be the one, and I think I lent it to somebody that you would read first. It's really, really good and really interesting. And then the tenth insight was the second one, as you can see. It's like it's not even that old and it's totally worn. That's brilliant. Okay. So what else have we got here? We've just a couple more, just on a shorter book that's quite easy to understand and read, and it's not way over our heads, is this lovely one by Diana Cooper. And this is called A Time for Transformation. How do you awaken your soul's purpose and claim your power, okay? And I don't want this to be too long because I know I get cut off at 15 minutes. And I just opened it on number 13. 
and this is it says our shadow self so you'll hear people talk about the shadow self and i remember when i first was starting i was like what does that mean and what do you mean process how do you process how do you look at your shadow self okay so this is helping you with this so often it is the quiet repressed person who has the unexpected violent outburst with devastating consequences it is the too good to be true virtuous preacher who has had the damage in a fair. Within our consciousness, it is the personalities we push down and ignore and refuse to recognise would burst out and severely embarrass us. And because we have suppressed them, we often don't know how to recognise them. So how do we recognise our suppressed parts? Number one, anything we suppress is drawn to our attention in dreams. Okay. Number two, any person we dislike is showing us a personality within ourselves that we dislike. That's our triggers. If we positively hate somebody, then we have had that hated personality suppressed within us and we are drawing that in like a vibrational match, okay? And number three, when we have extreme responses to something, there is something not dealt with inside of us, okay? So that's just a little bit out of that and that's by Diana Cooper. Okay, last two ones, because I need to hurry up, is this is a lovely one by Rebecca Candle. It's called Campbell. It's called Rise, Sister Lies. And I would use her oracle cards as well. And it's a really, really beautiful book. It's so lovely. A guide to unleashing the wise, wild woman within. So that's one for women. And um, I wonder, should I read something out of that? So this is about the mystic always rises. As she let her soul sing, she let go of lifetimes of silence truth missiles cementing into the deepest caverns of her soul a voice snubbed out for centuries for saying too much for standing up too much for being too much okay this really resonates with me because all my life i felt like i'm too much <laughs> so this really helps you to awaken that wild woman within to awaken that part of you that that we've tried to be this good girl throughout our lives and that's a lovely book lastly now this is a quite a deep one but it is probably one of my favorite books i have it on audio audible and it's called mary magdalene revealed okay and it's by megan watterson i also have her oracle cards as well that's them there and um, they're quite deep but they're really really interesting and this is just i really love her voice i love the way she describes it so there's certain people i'll only listen to in audible because they're fun um, because I love, you know, I just love, you know, the animation. I just love connecting with them. Um, and this is a really lovely one that just really helps you understand, you know, if you're interested in teachings and you're interested in God and Jesus and Mary Magdalene and knowing a little bit about her and her gospel, it's really, really fascinating. And um, I've just opened it up here of what it means to be human. Okay. And it's a, it's a quote, Mary. Peter said to Mary, sister, we know the Saviour loved you more than all other women. Tell us the words of the Saviour that you remember, the things which you know that we don't because we haven't heard them. And that's Mary 6, 1 to 2. Um, and then it goes on to say, there, are, there was far less at stake for me. I could answer questions that they couldn't simply because I was an outsider, an outsider not seeking to ever be let in. I was often asked what I was doing there at Union Theology Seminary, a non-Christian among Christians training to become ministers, reverends and priests. Why would I want to devote three years of my life to the academic and spiritual rigours of divinity school if I never intended on leading a congregation or even becoming a card carrying member of the church? So this is talking about um, Megan, okay, and um, her trainings, okay. So it's it's really lovely, but it's fascinating. Um, and it's just a nice book, just as you can see. So those were just some ones I just grabbed and I thought I would share them um, to help anybody that's just a little bit stuck or just like wanting a good book and none of them might be of any use, but I've tried to give you a bit of a flavour for all different types. I have so many, it's unreal, um, and a lot of them aren't fully read. So, and a lot more different ones I have on um, on Audible as well, okay, which are really, really good. There's a lovely, a couple of ones on Audible I would highly recommend for women. And it's called, it's called Girls Stop Apologising. I can't remember her name, but Girls Stop Apologising. I'll post it below. Um, she is brilliant. Very, very good. Okay, so I um, hope you're having a lovely day or evening, whatever you're doing. And um, talk to you soon.